what's the smallest amount of work you can do that will achieve the biggest possible results? That's the mindset we use with our built to scale members every day. We teach them to start small with slim down features, but to produce big results, like having an actual functioning product they can use and test. Now, most people approach it the opposite way. They start big. They build tons of features, spend way too long perfecting the design, and have trouble ever launching because they feel like they just need one more feature before they can do so. And then they get small results. They never stop to test and get feedback in the initial stages, so they never truly understand what users actually want and what they don't. In other words, they go off their gut. As a result, they put in a ton of work, time, and money only to feel disappointed and defeated down the road. Today, you're going to learn four critical questions to ask yourself before you start building your app so you can start moving forward with specific contained steps and get big results versus taking lots of big steps first and getting small results. Approaching the development of your app this way can seem counterintuitive at first, but once you understand these critical questions, you'll see why it can help you execute an actionable, results-driven development plan. I'm Kristen Youngs, co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps, where we help CEOs and founders build custom software to start or scale their businesses. Let's dive right in. I mentioned most people start with big ideas. They start with big steps and lots of work, but it often leads to small results. The reason is because the development of your app should be done in four, in a set of four distinct phases, which we call framework, foundation, function, and expand. By developing in phases like this, you're able to contain your app's feature sets and test all along the way so you can avoid doing a lot of backtracking down the road. Now, the very first phase starts by laying the framework, and the questions we're talking about today relate to the very first step in that framework. It starts by identifying a problem. See, the majority of people start building their app based on an idea they have, or rather, a bunch of ideas they have for a single product. When people approach development this way, they often delay the actual development of their app because they can't confidently invest any time or money into building it. They can't confidently do that because they don't have any answers, stats, or data to back up their idea. In fact, all they have is their own idea, but they don't know whether people will like that idea, whether people will want to pay for that idea, and worst of all, who they should even approach in order to market their idea. This ties in perfectly with our goal of doing the smallest amount of work in order to achieve the biggest results. The way most people approach this is they come up with an idea, then they put in a ton of work into figuring out whether people even want that idea. They do endless research trying to understand who they should market their idea to and who would even buy it. We often see people in this stage for months and even years because they never truly get the information they need. They put in a ton of upfront work, but they get very few if any, results. By approaching the very first step in a different way, though, you can do minimal amounts of work and get lots of actionable results in return. Instead of planning your development based on an app idea you have, plan it based on a single specific problem you're solving. See, when you're trying to build an idea, you have to do lots of work to figure out whether or not your idea is good. But when you're solving a specific problem, there's very little figuring out to do. If you're solving a problem, it's not hard to figure out who has that problem. That should be obvious from the start. And knowing that piece of key information will lead directly to the other answers you need too, like whether people will pay for, pay for solving that specific problem or to whom you should be marketing a solution to that specific problem to in the first place. You see where I'm going with this? When you have an idea, you're doing a lot of guesswork. When you're solving a specific problem, you don't have to guess because a lot of the answers are already obvious. So the first quit critical question you need to ask yourself before you ever start develop developing your app is, what single specific problem am I solving? Now, keep in mind that I'm using the words single and specific. The reason for that is while your app might end up solving lots of problems once it's been built to full scale, your MVP should only solve the main problem you have you've identified, the single specific problem you're providing a solution for. You can build onto that in the later phases I mentioned. Now, once you've outlined that problem, and I urge you to do so in a single sentence so you don't broaden your focus too much, you need to ask yourself another critical question. And this is important to know if you're planning on monetizing your app. 
do many people have this problem? In other words, do enough people have the problem you're solving that it's worth building an app for? Most of the clients we work with are building apps for their own businesses or industries, so they generally already have a good idea whether or not lots of people have the problem they're solving. If you're building software for your industry, you should be able to answer this question easily. Regardless, though, you need to definitively answer this before you move forward. If many people do not have the problem you're solving, there's a very little chance you're going to be able to gain traction once you do try to market and sell your app. The next critical question to ask is, do people have, do people have this problem frequently? Now, before we break this one down a little more, I wanna give you some context on this. The majority of apps have multiple users. For job boards, maybe it's companies and applicants. For marketplace apps, maybe it's sellers and buyers. You see where I'm going with this. Most apps have multiple user types. When you start to answer the question about whether people are experiencing the problem you're solving frequently, make sure you're thinking about your key user type, which is the user who will be using the app the most. For example, if you have an app that connects lawn care companies with residents in their area, you can assume the lawn care companies will be the ones using the app every day since it's their job, whereas the, res the residents might use it once or every now and then. So when you're answering the question of whether people experience the problem frequently, in this case, you'd consider your key user group first. In our example here, it's the lawn care companies who would very likely need to be connecting with customers on a daily basis. It's okay if both user types don't necessarily experience the problem frequently, but as long as your key user type does, you'll have the validation you need to move on to the next critical question to ask before developing your MVP app, which is, are those people willing to pay to solve the problem you've identified? Now, this is where it gets a little less straightforward. If you've identified a problem, you can fairly easily tell whether people experience the problem, in other words, enough to warrant building a solution for it, and whether people experience it frequently. Now you need to understand whether these people would be willing to pay for a solution to their problem. This begs questions like, how serious is their problem? What part of their life does it relate to? And what will having a solution actually mean for them? There are two key areas in which people will pay to improve, their emotional state and their income state. Their emotional state can be things like happiness, convenience, entertainment, and more. Their income state can relate to their job or business. To understand whether your market will pay to solve the problem you've identified, you first need to understand where it falls in terms of importance for them. You can look at this as the ROI or return on investment they get for buying into a solution to their problem. In business, this is usually straightforward with some quick math. If you're building a business tool to help solve an industry problem, you should have a decent understanding of the kind of financial impact businesses will experience by investing in your solution. For example, your solution might bring them more qualified leads help with their sales process, improve the fulfillment of their services, or even help them automate and scale their businesses. In terms of an emotional ROI, think about big apps like Uber for ride shares, Airbnb for vacation rentals, or Grubhub for food delivery. From a consumer point of view, these apps might not generate more leads or sales, but they might save someone from having to rent a car while they're on a business trip. They might give someone the convenience of having a kitchen during their business trip, which, which could help them maintain the healthy diet they've been on. They could save someone who's low on groceries but needs to feed their family of four without having to leave the house. Those are the kinds of things people are often willing to pay for because the return they get from their investment is far beyond the monetary value. Now, in your case, you might find people aren't willing to pay for a solution to a problem. Maybe it's just not pressing enough to warrant a financial investment. In that case, by answering these critical questions before you ever start development, you'll be able to put in the minimal amount of work possible in order to achieve the biggest results. Instead of spending months building your MVP app only to realize people don't wanna pay for it, the only work you'll have done will be evaluating and answering these questions. Remember, you need to be approaching development in the most minimal way that gets you the maximum results. And doing that starts by answering four critical questions. What single specific problem are you solving? 
By answering this in one sentence, you'll be able to answer effectively the next three questions. Do many people have this problem? Are there enough people in the world experiencing this problem that it warrants a solution? If you're building an app for your business or industry, you've likely already answered this. Do those people experience this problem frequently? Remember to keep your key user in mind when answering this. If they experience the problem frequently, you can move on to the next and last question. Will people pay for a solution to this problem? In other words, what will their return on investment be? And will that overshadow the financial commitment you're asking them to make? If your solution addresses a problem people have when it comes to their emotional or financial state, that's your starting point. Next, analyze whether that problem is worth paying to solve. All right, I hope that helped you learn a helpful new technique as you move into developing your MVP app. With the questions we went over, you should be able to put in the least amount of work while getting the maximum results. If you learned something new today, go ahead and click the subscribe button right below this video so you can stay updated on every new video released. And if you want to take this way further, head to coachingnocodeapps.com and sign up for our extended training series. It's completely free. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.